if you build that for us and put that in, I think the developer would be like, all right, we're very interested in that conversation can happen. But that has to be something that you know, CH is interested in. Good question. Yes, ma'am. Um, we've been building a lot of, you know, extending the bypass and things like that. It's a great point, and, and I guess it's a good, 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 yeah, good comment to, to give us. But yeah, you can imagine having smaller green spaces, green spaces kind of as jewels on a necklace. Um, we did point it out, you'll see on our plans, on some of them we actually have shown a trail system. Right, and that's along, where I was, yeah, 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 to enjoy exactly. that, I mean, exactly. otherwise it's just sitting there, nobody ever gets to enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, and I think that makes all the sense, it really does. Yes, uh, and yeah, that's going to be a part that as soon as we get this done on Monday, we'll start having questions and get comments in. And right now, the comments come straight, you know, just personal to the project group. But I think we'll have a module that we're going to activate where there can be a dialogue that you can see and participate on. The question was, can you have comments on the website? And that's going to be set up next week. Yes, sir. In the back. And the first part of it has to do with the public versus the private segregation. Do you have an estimate of just what is going to be truly public, public access, parking, green space, et cetera, et cetera, overall with this project? And the second part of that question directly addresses what he asked. Who will own, once you decide, you know, once this project has begun, who will own that green space? And the reason I ask is that this property has been owned for a considerable length of time in the community, and the value has grown to the extent that now the community can't really afford to buy it back. And now that it's been built, <coughs> it's going to become considerably smaller, which is going to really drive the value of whatever green space is left through the roof. So, who, who will own that? Is, is it the developer that ultimately owns this now and in the future? That's a great question. So the question is basically the public-private division and particularly in regards to any green space and the value of that green space. Um, that can take many different forms. Um, the reality is the city could choose to buy some green space as part of development and make it a city park. Uh, the city could ask a developer to dedicate some green space as part of a development thinking of that scenario, it would probably be more likely to develop a variation in how that you know, works with their development. Um, I think the other part of that is developers are going to be dedicating, frankly, I think conserving Sucker Creek is one of the big things we heard, so they're already going to be making that move as kind of a, a, either private space as public access or turning it over to the city. Um, so that would probably be a publicly accessible space for a preserved space. Um, so in terms of more active green space, could be something the city tries to purchase, could be something the city tries to work out to deal with the developer, could also be, and there's a number of these, where the developer actually has a green space uh, as part of the development that's maintained by a homeowners association or a development association. You know, the parks that we're drawing here, they are pretty large. <coughs> uh, I think we were thinking that might be more of a development association for all the residential in there, and that's their park, and it's privately maintained through that fund. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, you had, early on, you had mentioned institutional space, but in your scenarios, I didn't see any. That's a great point. Yeah, we actually talked about that. Yeah, the, the question was, if institutional is the current zoning and it's a potential future use, why don't any of the, the plans reflect that? The, the quick answer is, is because it can take so many different forms. You know, Chris gave the example of a, a small campus or school or a church or a, you know, a medical facility, children's close to home. I mean, there's, there's no sort of standard institutional use. We could, we could spend a lot of time looking at a lot of different configurations of that, but it's such an open-ended thing. Uh, that's why it doesn't, doesn't reflect that in any of the plans. Well, when we've thought about it, we will look at that, um, but you just triggered a, a really important global point I want to make to all of you. Um, you know, these are all scenarios to help us evaluate what it is we want to see and what's most important to us. Uh, but what this 
update to the plan is going to lay out is really kind of our desires and what we'd like to see, but it's really going to be up to the private developer to make a proposal to us. This needs to be well enough represented that we can evaluate that proposal and, and make a decision on it. That's really why we're revisiting this. But in no way are we, the city, uh, designing a plan and saying, here's the plan, you develop it. I mean, if someone does it, fantastic, but uh, <laughs> chances are minute. Uh, the, you know, developers going to come in with things, products that they're thinking of, things that make sense to them, uh, figure out how, you know, what they're comfortable in doing, and they'll then be pitching that to us. But this, and again, keep that in the back of mind, we should be thinking about how we write this and lay it out so that we can evaluate that. So that's a great question. Yeah, I'm concerned about the traffic flow. Uh, you can see all the residences are flowing into Longfellow or down to Evening Street. And we have the parking on that north office building going into Larimer. Have you ever been on Larimer early in the morning? <laughs> You're going to add all that traffic into that one place. Is Larimer going to be, uh, going to be opened up? Is it going to be made wider? Because you're talking about, uh, one thing you said about uh, down here in your retail area, is it was going to be right turn in, right turn out. Yet, anybody who's got any brains will come down Hayhurst, come in the back way into the parking area, and walk into the retail. So, I, I see Hayhurst being greatly increased in traffic flow, which is, you know, a very residential street. Lerber is already crowded, and we, I can't get out of my driveway. So the long fellow will be just like it. It's a narrow one. You know, the increase in traffic that's going to happen on these roads yeah. that we're trying to get here is going to be, I think, neighborhood people trying to get to something that didn't exist before. Um, we're really not designing this cut through. The reality is we are going to, we're stuck with these two traffic lights. We could, you know, we get into a little bit about, you know, it's possible to move something. The reality of getting a third light, I think, is pretty low, um, if not possible, but there's a spacing issue. Um, yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so we're, we we kind of have these access points, but any kind of development is going to have to take into consideration the past, which probably does mean there's some kind of widening that happens to not you know everything that happens basically east of Ayers to High Street, just kind of a stacking area to allow that access out. I mean, there, there will be in this part right here, there will be an increase in traffic under most of these scenarios. This will become an increased area, I think. And again, this gets into the really detailed design. I think we probably probably work hard to design some the, the Quinta Galena is the, the main point where you get trying to get it out. Uh, but you're going to need a uh, lease valve on, on there. It sounds to me like you're minimizing the traffic yes. problems. Well, and part of it is we were get we want to hear from you about the different uses of what you okay. like, and then we can get into those kind of details. Yes, in the back. Do any or all these scenarios anticipate tax abatements for the developer? Developer. We're not thinking about that. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, the question is about tax abatements for the developer. I don't think we're thinking about that at all. Um, I think you know that would be the city coming. Sorry, that would be the developer coming forward to the city plan, and then the city evaluating it. Um, you know, I think we talk about things like residential development. That's something the markets are already going to be interested in doing. Really, no need for the city to dive in. If we all really want to park, the city might need to figure out how to to do that. That might involve some kind of financing to help make that happen, uh, or trade-offs. I've talked about the life of the city. We should be interested in getting office. If that's in any way a possibility, there might be an interest in the city playing, uh, you know, helping that facilitate that happening again because that's helping all of us from the, the, the services we get. But that, that's really waits to see the proposal from the developer and say, all right, how do we, you know, what's the market going to do? What do we really want to have that you may have problems achieving in your pro forma and, and making that happen? Yes. Um, it, is this process, what is the, the end result of this process? Is this to shape the city's vision on what they'd like to see? And if that's the case, what are the, what's the mechanism or the incentive to ensure that a private developer will actually do what the city wants them to do? Is there some type of a document or deed restrictions or a land use plan planned for the end of this process? Okay, so the question is, is how does what we're doing influence what actually gets developed? And that's what the, the comprehensive plan is setting up in general what we'd like to see because other than that institutional version I showed you, which is their zone four right now, 
they could do that. We wouldn't have to have a community discussion because they submit building permits. Um, almost anything else we've shown here requires a rezoning. And so a rezoning process means they're bringing plans into the city, planning commissions evaluating it, we're all invited to the public meetings to, to say, have our say, and then goes to council. And you know, we've had many developments go through planning commission council. So we need to be on board for our appointed elected officials and bodies uh, to say yes and approve it. So that's the hurdle. And I think the win-win-win we envision, we hope, part of this is if we find some common ground as a community that's also market-driven and attracts a developer, that a developer can see the process we went through, see the thought process we've had, see how many of you are here, and that we kind of built a consensus and feel comfortable bringing a plan forward that aligns with what we come out of this process and have the feeling that they'll be able to get through planning commission and council in a, a acceptable time frame and without a battle that if you'd imagine uh, Continental bringing the giant eagle before us. You saw the number, you saw the meeting, if they kept going on that, they would have to go to planning commission and planning commission would have said, yes, we want to change the vested rights near ground, the zoning, from institutional use to retail use, so you can do that. And if the conference plan says no, which is pretty much right now says that's not, that development style wasn't what we were looking for, then the planning commission has every uh, right, based on what they've heard the community, to say, we're gonna deny it. So is that what, you're, this will adopt a comprehensive plan? This will, this this will be modifying the comprehensive plan. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna, hold on. This has a lot of value, but I, I, I told them at the beginning that I'd be the designated timekeeper. Okay. And so really, um, we, we said from six to eight, we're not going to cut this off at eight. And we want all the questions, but um, we can do this for, we can have some question and answers because there seems to be a, a need to do that for a little bit longer. But we do want your specific input on each of the four scenarios um, with their team. So. If, if I can respectfully say, let's go about five more minutes with Q&A, and then we really need your kind of input on the drawings, each of you. Um, that great. Is that okay? Is, it, is that everybody okay with that? All right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a Scenario would split on high streets and where people We haven't gotten that level of detail, and we probably will. That's the next phase where we, we can kind of get some alignment on some development scenarios that we can draw. We'll get into more of that kind of evaluation. Right now, we're just getting a sense of how much parking and use will require, which then translates into vehicles, and then there's manuals to help you say what that is and deliveries and trips and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, we can get there, but we haven't done it yet. Yes. Um, just, I, I have about 15 questions, but <laughs> I'd like to make a comment, and then I think a lot of people have a lot of questions, and I think the, the way this is being handled, I, I think you guys made a great presentation, but to cut off questions like this and to not have another, not have other meetings, not single meetings, not having other meetings like this plan smacks a little bit like railroading to me. And I think a lot of us have a lot of questions, and I think we deserve answers. And I think you guys are doing a great job, but this this is not enough. Okay. All right. Two more? Okay. The comment on the various scenarios, it, it strikes me that every one of the scenarios, the development is impacting to the extent possible. And, and leaving the green space almost looks like it's been a token, a token green space and so on. And I kind of have a couple of questions. It's one, is what language are you going to put in the suggested change to the comprehensive plan? Is it reflecting goals that, that we maximize the use of the property to balance city finances, or is it to accommodate what the, the residents are, are asking for? So the question is, is how are what we end up drawing or talking about reflective of the community in the city and, and what kind of controls? And the answer is, I mean, that's why we're having these meetings. That's why I showed those graphs of the circles is we're trying to find that common ground. Um, so, I mean, that is, we want to hear from you because we want to make sure we're reflecting what the community's 
saying it, it, your, your voice is part of the process. What kind of language will you be putting into or suggesting that the city adopt in the change in the government of the plan? We're still developing that. I mean, that's kind of what we're waiting to hear from you. This, we're showing some examples, and, and you're right, one of the points was it was pretty dense, and I could show that, and part of what was driving is, that, is to share that, because I don't think that was necessarily maybe what I was expecting, to see what that would look like. And the other piece is, again, going back to that market, yeah, we want to do something different, offer products that we don't have in ways. And that may not be the answer. But if we want to offer those products, kind of that opening piece, where the market is for those young professionals and empty nesters is less yard, still nice, really nice homes, but less yard. And so that means that things get tighter together. And then, again, what we're seeing successful around the nation, actually, and in Central Isle, is these common greens that everybody then uses together. And so we're not doing just a token green space. Yeah. We're using it to organize the development and then get those yards smaller so people can find a unit that appeals to them that we don't have to the, the first part of that question was that the green space looks token. In fact, it's very much the opposite. And I'd like to look through the schemes with you. When we laid these schemes out, we started with the green space. They're central to how the homes and the office and the retail are laid out in there so that they're accessible, they're public, very carefully thought through in terms of their size and how they're accessed and, and I'd like to walk through that with you so that, that that's not an impression.